Thank you. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. In your own home as well. It was amazing. <laughs> so what inspired you to become an osteopath? Long, long ago, when I was young, I always, I always wanted to help people. I think, I think even from when I was at school, I became a lifesaver. Um, and it was always this, like, I wanted to, I think my big dream was I wanted to be a doctor. And, uh, but I was thinking maybe I'm a bit uh, stupid for that. And then I thought, okay, I'm gonna become a physiotherapist. So I couldn't get in and I studied sport, sports science and thinking I can work my way through there, through injuries, getting people better, getting people out of pain. And, um, and then 20 years later, living in England, um, I came through the sports rehab and, and that field and I applied to go and study physiotherapy here in, in London and um, a friend of mine told me about osteopathy and I thought that's perfect. I want to be an osteopath because they look at the whole body to fix, to fix the body and ultimately to get rid of pain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been a long, long time and, uh, and yeah, that's where I'm now. You love solving pain. I love solving pain with the, yeah, so the mystery, mystery of pain. Yes. Uh, what is the new approach to healing back pain without traditional osteopathic treatments? I believe it's called PPD. Yes, PPD or psychophysiologic disorders or mind body syndrome. So there's a, there's a few ways of looking at, looking at pain and how pain comes from your brain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what led you to explore this mind body treatment protocol for pain relief instead of traditional osteopathic treatments? I think with that, it started, it started also with a course on visceral osteopathy. So visceral osteopathy is basically treating the gut mm -hmm. and saying, okay, any, any problems that's not structural, but it's on the gut. Um, it started with that because like I said before, I always wanted to study more and find out more how we can treat the body holistically. Um, and uh, when I studied that, I realized that what is the point of rubbing or manipulating or treating somebody's intestines, their gut, and they're still eating rubbish. Mm -hmm. They are causing the inflammation that we talk about pain is inflammation and how that, how that came across. And, um, and it just made me think that it doesn't work. And that led me on to SERPA, which is uh, the Stress Induced Practitioners Association, the UK group, or Dr. Um, David Hanscom, which is a spinal surgeon um, in Seattle. And his main job was to fix the back mm -hmm. through surgery. And he was the one that told me that 100% of back pain is not a reason of, or it is not, a, um, the back is not the cause of the pain and the pain is manifested in the brain. Okay, so the patient, the patient suffers from back pain and you said pain is in their brain. Uh, so is the pain not real? The pain is real because that's where you feel it. Mm -hmm. um, it is just that we got to look at, you know, on the, on the realness of the pain, you know, we got to look at what is the injury? How did he damage his back? So was he in an accident? Did he fall off his bike? 
did he damage his back or did he just wake up the next morning and his back was stiff or tying his shoelaces and his back has gone and now he's got an injury. So that is not called an injury. So why did he have the pain from doing a minor, a minor incident? So, so I think that makes sense. You know, it's like, how does the brain actually assess what is going on mm -hmm. and then gives you, gives you the pain? How would this work? So going back to that point of injury. So here we've got a guy with a nail right through his hand with no pain. We can clearly see the damage there, but he had no pain. And this is a real photo, it's not a fake photo. And here we've got a guy with a nail right through his boot. And this guy was in pure agony. And it's not because the guy through his boot is British and the other guy's Canadian. The guy with a boot had so much pain that even the morphine that they gave him was not enough. And then when they took the boot off, mm -hmm. they realized this nail didn't even break the skin between these toes. So it doesn't make sense, does it? So this guy with the nail through his hand had no pain, but this guy with the nail through his boot that didn't break the skin had a lot of pain. So it is, it is that, it is that emotion. Mm. It's uh, all mindset. So what does pain do to your body? What does pain do to your body? So basically, pain, firstly, let's look at where the pain comes. Why do we have pain? And the main reason why we have pain is anger. And anger comes in different forms. Anger is not just that guy that pulled in front of you at the intersection or whatever. But anger is also the guilt that you feel or the anxiety mm -hmm. or it's, a, it's in a lot of forms. So, um, and then what this hormone chains do through anger, it creates a pain sensation, but then the whole hormone change leads into what we call a metabolic inflammatory disorder. And what the metabolic inflammatory disorder is, is basically over time where you live in that chronic pain and the inflammation that comes from your, your body, from all the cells where the, where the um, disorder is, can lead to diabetes, leads to basically Alzheimer's or cognitive decline. And that's, that's, the, that's the risk of chronic pain. Mm. So yes, back pain, we can say back pain can cause Alzheimer's, but it's that whole path. You know, Alzheimer's don't start today, it started 30 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Well, what misconceptions do people have between mental health and physical health? I think with mental health, the conceptions of mental health, and this is what a lot of patients has asked me about, is there, is there something wrong in my brain then? And they see mental health is there's something wrong with me mentally. And physical health, we look at it, oh, I've got a pain in my back, so I must have an injury. So a structural problem. Mm -hmm. But and neither of those two are, are really true in the relations with pain, because the pain is more a neurological or a, um, 
yeah, neurological change in your brain and it's how how we think of it. You know, so so yeah, so um I think that's that's in short, yeah. Do you have an example from one of your patients? Yeah, definitely. Um I've got this guy, very active, very high sport, um sporty guy, and uh and he came to me with a you know, we say shoulder pain. And exactly, he swims a lot and does a lot of gym. Mm -hmm. And even, even he's cycling, then he gets this pain in his shoulder. And um, again, assessing him and all that and realizing that this pain just came on. Mm -hmm. No specific reason, it, it just came on. And um, and then when we were working with him, and he says, no, I've got no stress. I you know, haven't, got, I haven't got much stress. So when I, when I talked to him, sadly, his son died a couple of years ago. And he's going through a divorce. And then he told me he's got no stress. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, we always see stress as, as this current thing. But, but this is where, this is where we, I made him, not made him realize, but we realized that, yeah, I've got a lot of stress or past stressful situations in my life. And how that has mani manifested in my subconscious. Mm -hmm. And then when I do a movement with my shoulder, you know, the brain, he doesn't, he doesn't change where the stress comes from. He just, because the brain doesn't feel pain, so he leads it into his body. And that's why we call this mind-body syndrome. So, so the brain is just, transmitting it to your back or to his shoulder. And when he realized that, it was like a light switch went on. That he was thinking, no, it's not because of the swimming. It's not because of that. Because, because with him, it was, it was not even a week. And he, he was more working on all these things that was going on in his life. And it was like, Oh no, my shoulder is not sore, yeah. which is quite really um, mind blowing for him. This treatment obviously works. Then, how quick is it compared to traditional uh, ways of doing it? So, so the tradition or the difference between the traditional and this pain is is. First, we go on there. The traditional treatment, we normally say we assess four or five treatments and then you'll be pain free. But it is the same as giving somebody a, a, a tablet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will maybe take the pain away for a couple of days, but that pain will come back. And where this treatment is, one, it's chronic treatment. So you've got to think, some of these people that I work with has got pain for months years and I have seen a couple of years ago I've seen a guy that had so much pain that he couldn't sleep he couldn't I mean he couldn't function and it was two days <laughs> two days and he had no pain he was sleeping through the night he was he was a total different guy and yeah, so it, it can happen quick. So again, the pain is majority of the time, it is quick. Mm -hmm. But it is like I said earlier, is that metabolic inflammatory disorder is what it has caused can take a bit longer, or it does take longer to fix because, you know, if it takes 30 years to get into 
full on Alzheimer's. So we can get or diabetes, you know, then it can take a while to get to get out of it as well. But for pain, you know, that's why my program is is you know I put it on as four weeks, um, a four months. But uh, most people are out of pain within four weeks. Amazing. So you specialize in back pain. Uh, does this approach work on any different? Any other types of pain, or is it just back pain? Okay, I I focus on back pain because as an osteopath, we are known for people that treat backs um, or bones, mm -hmm. but um, it can work for any any um, any any pain in your body um, because, like I say, if the pain is generated in your brain, he can send it anywhere because majority of my patients as well, you know, they come with me, they come to me for, for treatment for their backs, but it doesn't take long. And then, oh yeah, I've got pain in my shoulder as well. And then, oh, I've got pain in my knee. So, so it does work for all of it. Whether, whether, whether osteopaths basically will say that that is because of your posture or alignment and that is absolutely BS. That's not true. How would you address skeptics in your method of treatment? So firstly, I won't, I don't disagree with them mm -hmm. or I don't argue because I can't see the point in that. Um, so uh, um, I want to make people think, because because we all we all logic. We all have cut ourselves before. So when you cut yourself, there's a process of healing. Mm -hmm. But chronic pain, when there was no cut, no damage, but you still got pain. It just doesn't make sense. So yeah, so I want to make people just think about it and then and then they turn around. Do you think the body communicates with pain? Definitely. Yes, because pain is a pain is a um, protective mechanism. We do need pain to survive. Um and how the body communicates is, is basically he runs off what we call fear. So, so when that bear stands in front of you, you don't fear the bear, mm -hmm. but you fear what he can do to you. And that's what we fear. So again, fear is part of that anger and but then how he communicates with you is through your nervous system, what we call the fight or flight. So you either fight the bear or you run away or you freeze. It's your choice. How have you done this treatment to yourself? Yes. That yes. Works. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that I was busy studying. So it was this last Christmas. So, uh, because I'm very interested or very um, excited to make my body stronger as well. So I was on a challenge of doing a hundred push-ups a day. And, uh, um, and then I know over the Christmas weekend, I wasn't doing much, but I was driving back. So just past Christmas, I was driving back from, from London and I got home and nice, relaxed, all the family's gone. And that night, I couldn't sleep. I developed so much shoulder pain. Out of nothing, I did nothing. My shoulder was so sore that, I mean, it kept me awake. It, I couldn't, I couldn't even sit up and my shoulder was so painful. Um, 
and I was thinking about all my all my work that I'm doing, and I'm thinking, but why does it? Why did this happen? So, firstly, I was analyzing it and thinking, why the shoulder? And then I realized I was just watching a video of a guy that was that dislocated his shoulder, a sports guy. He dislocated his shoulder, and another guy came back, came over to him. Actually, his opponent came over to him, and he manipulated his shoulder back into the joint and um, and that was the action but it was not that in my head because I want to fix and I love the anatomy I analyzed all the muscles around the shoulder and thinking what happened during that transition of dislocation and the stress that it put onto those muscles and ligaments and and he put it back and funny this guy carried on playing it was like as if there was nothing wrong but then I realized my pain was right from the front all the way to the back so exactly where all those muscles are sitting from your rotator cuff muscles in your shoulder and it was all on that but that was because my mind was onto that. Mm -hmm. But when I realized what was going on in my life, it was my mom's um, 20th year after she passed away. And also I was very stressed about my business and my, my practice and, and all that. It was like all that stress that was going on in my life mm -hmm. that increased my my adrenaline and, and that um, and then with this with this analyzing that shoulder and that injury that this guy that guy had put it all onto me and my brain put that all that stress he put onto my shoulder and it was funny enough when I worked on my stresses through part of my program we've got techniques that we work on that um, three days later I was pain-free mm -hmm. yeah it was still a little bit sore here and there but I was back running back doing my push-ups back cycling and it was totally gone and I've got no symptoms. Right. So how can somebody integrate your mindset into their daily life? So that's quite a that's quite a, a thing. It's actually in a way quite easy. Mm -hmm. It's it's creating a new lifestyle. Um, because osteopathy 3.0 is the whole process so you've got to look at all the aspects of your life so first you need to work on the process of the stresses mm -hmm. and then then you add all the other things your, like your sleep your nutrition your mindset and your exercise so you said osteopathy 3.0 what about 1.0 and 2.0? What's the difference between all three of them? So I would say osteopathy 1.0 is when you study to get in the knowledge. <laughs> osteopathy 2.0, that is exactly, I think I mentioned it earlier, is, is more you get the osteopath and he analyzes what is wrong with you mm -hmm. and then he gives you those treatments for what is wrong. So it's the same as medicine 2.0. You go to the doctor and he gives you a tablet to relieve the pain. Where, and I can say the true osteopathy should be the 3.0. But I think osteopathy has gone into, or for the last how many years, has been into a 2.0 where they're trying to fix the problem that's not there. Mm -hmm. The problem is a lot wider so 
So sadly, I think, I think osteopaths are basically highly qualified massage therapists and it's, it's not working on pain. So yeah, with osteopathy 3.0, you never have to do treatments again. You never have to go and see, I will say a basic osteopath anymore or a chiropractor or anyone like that because you can fix yourself and yeah you can sit at your desk and fix yourself you don't even have to leave your house Amazing. if somebody decides to follow your way of therapy would they would they have to ignore everybody else or how would that work so do you mean like do they have to go and see okay. other treatment therapy therapists yeah. or or anything like that? Yeah, in a sense, yes, because because um, what is it for? You know, if it's not for pain, is it just to to uh, have a nice massage? Which is great, you know. Mm -hmm. I've got nothing against massage. I've got nothing against exercise. Exercise is one of the things we need to do. And, um, but, but medication, there's no medication on the market that can heal you. And on the point of medication, you've got it all inside your own body. You just need to activate it. And you don't activate it through medication, you activate it through your brain. So what's the first step of adopting your mindset? So I would say the first step would be stop talking about your pain. Mm -hmm. Because no one want to know, no one really cares except the person that's really going to fix you or yeah, get you on the path. And I think, I think the first step in there is stop talking about it, do some research and, um, and go from there. Yeah. Okay. Call me and I can, I can, I can guide you. I can guide you. I can give you the steps. What made you want to transition from a typical osteopath into a 3.0 osteopath? I think it was at that point where, in a sense, I was bored of rubbing people's backs. Mm -hmm. I, I was tired of, of giving them exercises to fix their pain. That was the one thing. But when I realized that the pain doesn't come from the structural deformities, what we want to call it, um, in the body. And it comes from how we actually think about ourselves mm -hmm. that, that we need to change. And, um, and yeah, so I think that's why also I'm on the path of what Dr. Peter Atia say on the centenary decathlon so we want to be in our 90s or hundreds optimal fit with no pain no medication and loving life so who influenced you who's your guru in your field so my main guru i will say is, is um uh, Dr. Hanscom mm -hmm. and uh, the spinal surgeon and but it's also Dr. Sano. Dr. Sano was the first one and he was and that was that was in the 60s 1960s um, and the 70s when he realized that that back pain doesn't come from the back mm -hmm. and he was working and and we're thinking now we've got a little bit of, of um, resistance from other osteo or the traditional osteopaths and that. This guy had so much opposition. Mm -hmm. 
and and I know that I know that um, Dr. Hanscom and Dr. Schubiner and Dr. David Clark, um, they were the ones that, in a sense, took it to the next level, mm. and um, and yeah, especially especially Dr. Hanscom because because he was the guy that was a spinal surgeon, and when he had all the pains and the anxiety and the depression and major neck pain and he realized it's all from stress and when he realized that he's losing patients on for surgery to get them better without without um surgery mm. how can people find out more about this treatment so so we've got Serpa. Um, you can you can look on their website to look at it, and I'm a member of them. And also the PPD Association, um, which is the American group of Serpa. I would say they one of the main groups mm -hmm. um, of which I'm a member as well. And um, and then Dr. Hanscom back in control, or. Uh, or book in with me. You know, give me a give me a shot, and uh, and I can guide you because a lot of these treatments and a lot of guys heal themselves just by reading the book. And we've got an app as well where you can actually join the app. And also, if you do it through me, you can maybe get it free. But it takes my my work away. But um, you can you can heal yourself from just reading all these guys' books. But I'm willing to help and and guide you into that into those fields. So, what do you offer if someone wants to know if you might be able to help them? Okay, so, I would say the first step is is um, booking a, a free consultation with me, mm -hmm. and and we can talk about it. We can talk about your symptoms because, as I was experienced through my life as well, your pain is the worst no one ever had the pain that you've got and or as long as you've got and um so yeah so so contact me and we talk about it firstly and then we i can guide you on to on to the next step because um because we all all can live pain free amazing i've got no more questions Good, thank you. Good. Thank you. Was that okay? Perfect.